To create a 2D game regardless of the engine or programming language you use, an essential component you need to be familiar with is the Texture Atlas, also known as Sprite Sheet. So, as I mentioned in a previous video, animating objects and characters involves a sequence of images or frames, each with a slight change from the previous one. That said, to create a character animation, one might think they could achieve this by updating the sprite's texture with different character poses stored in separate image files. If you didn't know what a sprite sheet was and still came up with this idea, I'd say you're a really smart person. Congratulations! The concept is there, however, in practice it's a bit problematic. Animating a single character with say 100 frames would require loading 100 separate images. Now, imagine having multiple characters in an animated environment. That would be overwhelming, if not unmanageable. So, what is a sprite sheet and how is it helpful? Well, a sprite sheet or texture atlas is a PNG file that contains a character movements or an object animations arranged as frames. That being said, using a sprite sheet in Pixie.js requires going through a few steps. The first step is to inform the renderer about the size of the frames and their positions within the image file, along with some additional information. To do this, we need to create an object with the following properties. The frames property is where we specify the data for each individual frame of the animations in our texture atlas. I have a talking animation, so I refer to the frames as talk. The first frame, talk1, is represented by three properties. Frame contains data about the position of the frame, represented by the x and y properties, as well as its dimensions, represented by w and h. The sprite source size property can be a bit tricky. Sometimes a frame may have additional padding or space that you want to eliminate. With this property, we specify the exact location of the active part of the frame. The source size property represents the size of the frame before any trimming is applied. A couple of things I want to mention here are that although it depends on your sprite sheet, you will most likely not need the trimming information. In that case, the sprite source size values for width and height would be the same, with x and y set to zero. Secondly, you can use an application to automate this process instead of doing it manually. This way, you can obtain the data from a JSON file that you export using the software. So, back to our example, the talking animation consists of 5 frames, so I will copy the remaining data from the article. The last property in this object is meta, which contains the metadata of the texture atlas. Next, we have the animations property, which contains a list of frames that make up each animation. Now that we have set the segmentation data, we need to load our texture. Next, we create a sprite sheet instance where the constructor takes the texture and the data object as arguments. Once that done, we need to call the parse method to apply the segmentation to the sprite sheet. Now that we have everything in place, we need to create a special type of sprite by instantiating the animated sprite class. The constructor of this class takes the animation we want to play as argument. The animation doesn't work by default because it is set to be stopped initially. To play it, we need to call the play method. We can of course control the speed of the animation using the animation speed property. Finally, if we want to create another animation, it's no problem. We simply need to add the necessary data about the animation frames and then pass the animation to the animated sprite constructor.